all, I'm assuming, own Blackberries at one point in our lives. But this guy wangles his way in. Wangles? I don't know. I don't even know where that came from. Is that a word? Is that a word? It should be. You guys, I don't know where that came from. I don't either, but I, I like don't know. it. I hope it's not like a terrible like faux pas. I hope oh, I'm not making right. fun that's of not someone. Like, a, yeah. like I hope that's not There's been canceled. There's a whole cancelable group of wangles word. right now. They're, they're gonna cancel you. <laughs> like, I'm done. <laughs> Anything goes. goes. <laughs> That's pretty much yeah. what happened with us too. Yeah, yeah it was. Uh, it's kind of you fun. know, it is fun. I find it more fun, especially because for actors, like we're so used <laughs> to like sit down in action, and I think it makes people nervous. Mm -hmm. It makes me nervous. I don't know. Yeah, I yeah, I don't know. I'm just, you know? I just feel I'm at this point now where it, like doesn't even phase me when there's a camera. Like, it's this, somebody could I could be walking down the street, somebody could stick a mic in my face and there'd be a cameraman there. And you like have a you have a one-liner? On? Uh yeah, I'd be like, <laughs> yeah, this is happening. Yeah, sure. It might happen. <laughs> we um speaking of walking down the neighborhood, we live across the street from each other. Yes, we do. And we don't this is like the first time we've seen each other well since your premiere. I we mean, don't see each other that much. Hey, we don't see each other nearly enough, I would say. No, we don't. Considering we're we're neighbors, like I know. Super, super close neighbors. And like each other. Yeah. I mean, enjoy I think, each other's company. I, yeah, enough. Yeah, <laughs> I, I enjoy I mean, your I company. I, I enjoy mean, your company. I enjoy your company, and I also really like your wife. Did you like just not want to presume that that I enjoyed yours? Is that why you said that, Glenn? You're hard to read. Uh, am I? I mean, sometimes. Am I? It's <laughs> for like in the beginning. Okay. In the beginning, I was like, I don't know. Yeah. I feel really unsecure. Really unsecure about this. Yeah. Not 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 sure how this guy feels about me. Yeah. Kind of a thing. Yeah. I mean, I knew Jill liked me. <laughs> yeah. She's she's easy to read. <laughs> no, you're right. Good. I'm. I'm <sighs> what it is with me I, it's like i've got a moody a moody and yeah i think i'm a little i've learned this about myself i didn't know this but like i and and you're just another person to kind of confirm the fact that <laughs> <laughs> now uh, I, feel, I feel bad like i'm the, like no the, no no the no. nail in the coffin no you're <laughs> confirming something that i've learned about myself that, that i've heard through other people like Oh, like other people have come to me that I've become friends with. Yeah. Like, yeah, when I first met you, I thought you kind of didn't like me or like I thought you, uh, I don't know, like that. I, I think I can be a little standoffish and I, and I, I don't mean to, mm. I, and I don't know I'm doing it. Um, and I don't know what that is. It's like, um, I don't know if my guard is up or. Do you think it's because you traveled around so much as a kid? I think that's Cause your partly... dad's you're, you're like a military brat, right? Is that a terrible term? Call people military no, brats? No, no, um, no. I, I don't think so. I mean, I, 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 maybe uh, I've never <laughs> understood it to be. Um, I, yeah, I think it's possible. I think it's possible that that has something to do with it. Yeah. Because um, I'm both. I feel like uh, like I consider myself a like an intro uh, an extroverted introvert. Yeah, I explain myself the same way. Yeah. Yeah. Like I have no problem being extroverted, going to into social situations, and you know, uh, I don't have an issue with that. But uh, but if given the opportunity, I tend towards introversion and yeah. aloneness. Aloneness, uh, like yeah. just you in a room in your house. Yeah, <laughs> ideally. Me, me too. <laughs> ideally, <laughs> ideally, ideally. Once yeah. you have children, though, that's done. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, done. Yeah. yeah, I had to. Th that was that. Just took me a couple of years to adjust to having kids. Did it? Freaks me out. Mm -hmm. It 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 was it was not like I need me time. Yeah, I need time to just like I need not for things to not be asked of me, and you know I'll go days without checking my email, and then I'll realize oh no I haven't checked my email in like three days. Yeah, I do um, the same thing. Christian just said to me, uh, "Did you send that email to blah blah blah?" And I was like, "Speaking of blah blah blah." Yeah, yeah, was, yeah. Um, and I I don't know. I you think I did. Mean, yeah. I might have. Well, I didn't you, look you know at my phone all weekend. You know you've with that. <laughs> you <laughs> sent an email. Yeah. Oh, I have to go back through my sent go to your emails. sent folder. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I go to my sent folder yeah. and then I have to find it. There's yeah. a lot in my sent folder, though. It's a bunch of nonsense. Um, but yeah. you guys, um, this is Glenn Howerton. Hi. We're, we're here. Um, I'm a big fan of Glenn's um, and just saw the most amazing film. I went to the premiere of Blackberry and it was uh, extraordinary. 
It was so good. I was so happy that you guys came. Yeah, it was really fun. It's nice to see people, well, outside of work, see people outside of work. But it was really, I didn't quite know what to expect. I think a lot of people did not know yeah. quite what to expect. I didn't really know what to expect. Well, I remember uh, when you booked the movie and you were getting ready to go and you were a little like, I don't know what to expect. Yeah. Um, it was, you know, I my my background is not in comedy and yet I've worked almost exclusively. I, I mean, I literally, that blows my mind that your really? background is not in comedy. Yeah, I, I guess I... I, I I don't have a lot of perspective on it, but yes, I think considering um, how It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia came to be, you would assume, I think, I think most people would assume that the three of us were like comedy people, that we did stand up and sketch and stuff yeah. like that. Um, but none of us ever did any of that stuff. Really? None of us even really, I mean, I had done, I mean, the first big job I booked in LA was a, was a sitcom. Um, is that the 80s show? Yeah, it was that 80s show. Yeah. But that was, uh, you know, I, I, that was, yeah, it wasn't my, it wasn't never my intention to, yeah. to get into to comedy. But, but looking back now, like in retrospect, I look back and I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I always, I always liked comedy. I was, I, I think I was always destined to do it. I, yeah. I, yeah, I think. Do they teach like dick jokes at Juilliard? They don't teach dick jokes. There's no class in dick jokes. No. Um, no, those all happen in the cafeteria. Um, and uh, you're going to have Sam Witwer on, so he can tell you all about that. And uh, uh, no, they do, they do teach a, they do teach a, well, I don't know what they do now. Yeah. Because uh, I've now, I mean, I graduated 23 years ago. Seriously? Really horrible. Do you know how scary that is? That's yeah, no, I don't like it at all. I don't. When like you realize that you could have adult children that like consume alcohol legally, mm -hmm. it's really a terrible, terrifying moment. I, I don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> next year, next year, I will have graduated uh, from high school. Thirty. It'll be thirty years, and I, I, that, I just can't. I just can't. With how that. old are you? Uh, forty-seven. Forty-seven. I'm forty-three. Yeah. So yeah. You're getting there. <laughs> I, You'll see. I it's I feel. I feel, I feel my age every morning I step out of bed. Now. You do, yeah. What, where do you feel it? Like what? What's what? What? How's that manifest itself? Do you get it? Yeah. Go ahead. I I think. Well, I know. I just as I'm like I'm pondering. I'm trying to figure out how I feel it. Just an overall sense of doom. No, it's. <laughs> I I think it's that. Um, if I drink one glass of wine too much now. Yeah, you feel it. I feel it. Yeah. And when I'm not working, I. I I like to consume wine every night. Yeah. <laughs> and so that it's I wake fun. up <laughs> every morning uh -huh. not feeling good. Okay. So yeah. so there's a hangover uh thing happening, but is there also like a like do you have this thing of <laughs> so there there'll be times where I'll wake up and I'll be getting out of bed and I'll be like, "Oh, God, I'm like so sore, you know." And I'm yeah. like I'm like, "Oh man, dude, I really I didn't realize I crushed that workout super hard yesterday like Cause I'm like, oh, it's crazy sore. And then I'll be getting out of bed and then I'll be like, oh, I haven't worked out in a week. <laughs> I was just going to ask you if it's what really happening? the workout. <laughs> Why? Yeah. yeah. Like it, it's not, it, and yeah. it's not, it's like no. completely unrelated. Just... Have you had the joy of throwing your back out while you sleep yet? <laughs> <laughs> Why you not sleep? once, but twice. I don't know. Okay. All right. Let's, it, yeah, so I've had the joy of, of throwing my back out. Many times. Yes. Never in my sleep. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Now is this like a like literally you you you're, you're turning over or something it and has then to be. and then and you wake up like ah oh, like no no that? or or is it like you wake up the next morning I wake and you're up like, and my oh, back shit. is messed up. Okay, that that has happened. Okay, but never never to the point where I'm like immobilized. Usually, what it is is I'll wake up. I, it would be that I would wake up in the morning, and I'd be like, uh oh. That's teed up. Like if I do anything you, you do. wrong today, it's it's going. <laughs> and then your kids jump on you. Yeah, and then something. You know, <laughs> and then it's over. And it's over. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. No, mine is that pretty. But it's that. It's that. Where like I wake up and I know I'm on the verge, and then I'm like, I have I have three choices here. I could take some Advil mm -hmm. and just like pray, get on top of it. Pray right. to baby Jesus that it goes away, mm -hmm. or I could go to the acupuncturist uh -huh. or the massage therapist. If I can get into one of them, they can sort of. And that's if you're lucky and you've yeah. got the time to do that the time. that day. 
because yeah. you've got yeah. multiple jobs. And I've been food. known to take like six Advil in the morning just sure. to like get get uh-huh. it out of my system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so it, they do say that that is good. I mean, because it, it does decrease the inflammation and maybe, because the thing is, is like with back pain, and I don't know if you've had MRIs done. Lots. Okay. Do you have, do you have, you've done a lot of, you've done a lot of like physical stunts and much more than me coming from comedy. Like I do any of that shit. (laughs) (laughs) There is a difference. Like like whatever the opposite of Tom Cruise is, like whatever the opposite of an actor who's like, I do all my stunts. I'm Matt. I'm like, (laughs) I'm like, I do none of my, I do as few of my stunts as possible. But like, have you ever had a big stunt for something where they were like, you want to try this? Uh, when, well, when I was younger, I wanted to be a stuntman. That's Are, what I wanted to do. Really? Before I was an actor, before, yeah, before I, I thought like, oh, acting would be fun. I remember watching that show, The Fall Guy. And I was like, that's what I want to do. Is that before? That's before Juilliard, obviously. Oh, wait. Yeah. No, yeah. This is, this like, is, we're talking like you, five-year-old Glenn. Could you imagine if you went to Juilliard and you were like, <laughs> I want to be a stunt guy. Yeah, that's, but I want to also know how to act. <laughs> <laughs> it's the place to do that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And come out having spent a lot of money. Yes. Right? Yes. yes. I yeah. want to learn classical theater so that I can jump off of buildings. I mean, there's a skill to it. Uh, yeah, 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 sure. It's not taught at Juilliard, though, I'll tell you that. <laughs> um, so when you were a five-year-old kid, you wanted to be a stunt guy. That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. I, I was a really, really physical kid. Like You're still really physical, though. Like I'm you, physical in the sense you that you break collarbones and then like go oh, back yeah, out and yeah. start snowboarding yeah. again. I guess that's true. Yeah, when it comes to some things, I am. When it comes to snow sports, yeah, I'm still very, uh, I don't know what, reckless a bit, a bit really? reckless with my body. Yeah, although less so since the collarbone break, that was a little bit of a eye opener for me, where I was like, maybe I shouldn't be like clean break though, j- jumping off of things anymore on my snowboard. Like you know, doing like do maybe I shouldn't be doing the park anymore anymore. Yeah, like I learned that. I love doing the park. It's I, I learned that with a massive concussion. Oh, you that did. was like the I was in the half pipe. I don't know what happened. Yeah. And I got hit by a kid that on skis, like a like eight year old boy that like came through. And I remember hitting my head so hard um that I I like sat there for a second. I was like, no, no, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. And I did one more run. And I went to stop. And you know how sometimes on ice your board goes, yeah, yeah. It was just enough to shake my head one more time. I was by myself too. Oh. And I immediately went to oh the my side. God. I didn't know what to do. Yeah. So I got down the mountain, got into my father's truck because I was with, in my dad's truck. How old were you at this point? 24. Okay. You were snowboarding? Yeah. Snow, started snowboarding really young. And um, and as I was driving down the mountain, I was throwing up in a old big gulp cup that my dad had in his truck that he used to like drink for work or whatever. And I was throwing up, calling my mom like and to keep me awake. And the last thing I said to my mom is a blue H. And she found me based on how long I'd been driving. And the so distance. you said something completely nonsensical. Well, the blue H is on the side of the road that tell you there's oh, a, oh, hospital. a hospital. Right. I managed to find a hospital. I guess the car was like parked up on the curb, like. Like I drove up on the curb. I have no recollection of any of this. I just opened my eyes and my mom was there. And the next time I went snowboarding, I wore a helmet. Oh, so you weren't wearing a helmet. I wasn't wearing a helmet. Oh, God. So the next time I went, I put a helmet on and it scared me so much. I cried the entire time I was on the mountain and I never snowboarded again. I don't know. The The, the, idea of, I think that the idea that like I now had safety equipment on, I think put into my mind, this is dangerous. And it Shit. never occurred to me that it was mm-hmm. dangerous. Mm-hmm. And I never snowboarded again. You never snowboarded? I just gave my snowboard away to my nephew. Isn't that oh crazy? Oh, my God. That's so sad. Like yeah. I, yeah. I, when I broke my collarbone, I also hit my head really, really hard. Like harder by far than I've ever hit my head yeah. in my entire life. Now, I was wearing a helmet. Had I not been wearing a helmet, I, 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 I'm fairly certain I'd be dead. Wow. Like, Really? I, I, yeah. Cause I hit, cause even with the helmet on, I hit my head so hard. It felt like I wasn't wearing a helmet. Oh my God. That's tar- awful. Yeah. And it was one of those things where like, when I opened my eyes, everything was way too bright and yeah. it was a sunny day. It was like a, you know, and I, I, I also distinctly remember there was this guy that like saw me and, and, you know, as I was like kind of starting to try to get up or whatever, he was like, Hey man, are you, he was like, are you okay? And I remember being, and I remember saying, no. Oh, God. <laughs> I just was like, like, no. 
No. Yeah. Um, and I just immediately, like this whole area where I broke the collarbone was, um, I just remember it was, it's the first bone I've ever broken. Yeah, I've never broken a bone. No I, idea how that was, feels. Yeah, yeah. It was, and it was just like it was just radiating. It wasn't even. It didn't even. It hurt. Yeah. But it didn't hurt more than, you know, if you bash yourself really hard or something. It just felt like that. But then it was like radiating in this weird way where I was like, that's a feeling I've never felt before. Were you Something's with wrong. the kids and Jill when that happened, or were you by yourself? I made the classic mistake, of, it was the last run of the last day of our oh, trip. no. And we were with our friend, I was with my buddy Shane who lives up there. Yeah. And um, and I was like, Shane, I think, I, yeah, I think it was, I was like, this is my last run. And he was like, no, you never say that. You never say that. And I was like, oh, right, shit. That's like a weird, you know, weird superstition. You're never supposed to say this is my last run because that's when you get hurt. Of course. And, I was, and then I made a joke and I was like, I, I, no, it's not my last run. I'm going to go. I'm going to take two more. I'm going to go two more after this, you know, <laughs> like making a joke, you know. And then, yeah, that's I broke happened. my collarbone. Wow. Yeah. But you went back like, I, six like weeks three later. weeks later, three, six weeks. Six, yeah. Back on the mountain. So when I went to the doctor, uh, he he told me it was a clean it was a clean break. So, I mean, I snapped it. It was like it was like that. Um, and. You know, but he he said uh, he's like with these, there's nothing really you can do. I mean, we don't recommend you getting anything in there no. to like join it. It'll it's just a kinda... weird thing that sort of heals on its yeah. own, I guess. Yeah, so it's just he put me in like a sling, and uh, and I was already in a temporary sling from the from the ER. Um, he put me in a sling, and he said it should heal in three weeks. And I was like, you know how old I am, right? I was like, I'm I'm four, I think at the time I was 45. I was like, I'm 45 years old. It's definitely not going <laughs> to heal in three weeks. He's like, it'll it'll fuse in three weeks, and then. And then in another three weeks, you should be, uh, well, yeah, you should be totally healed. But, and Jill, just because it was, it was the sea, we were in season and yeah. we usually go like a lot. She was like, when, she was just out of curiosity, when would he be clear to snowboard again? And this is Mammoth. Is that this where you was, were? Yeah, we go to Mammoth. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We, we almost always go to Mammoth. Um, and he said, uh, he said, in six weeks, he should be able to go back to full contact sports. And I was like, <laughs> What? I was like, wow. He doesn't that's... know you very well. I was like, that's amazing, dude. That's... <laughs> He's like, full contact sports. Yeah, full contact sports. That was, those were his words. And, and and I remember thinking like, okay, that's cool, but I'm definitely not going to. No. And it just so happened we had another trip planned, and it was exactly six weeks from the day I broke it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, ah, I'm probably not going to go on that trip. And then by the time we got to that place, like I had been to the doctor. He was like, it fused. Weirdly, the two pieces, the two halves of my collarbone like fused together like puzzle pieces it perfectly perfectly yeah crazy robin's healed or out he broke his his collarbone while he was playing football in high school yeah and it healed oddly but yes. not as much as my brother's my brother's healed with like a huge bump in front uh -huh. he was in a motocross accident yeah and it healed very the same thing happened to a buddy of mine he, it happened while he was he fell off of his motorcycle and his collarbone was like that, like his collarbone fused together like that. So he's got like a big, a bump big bump. Right That's yes. what my brother has. Not it the kind of disgusting. thing you would notice unless you knew it was there. Oh, oh really? His looks, my brother's his... looks like. Oh, really? He's, it's gnarly. His, oh, yeah. He looks deformed. Yeah. Like, and he's wanted to get it fixed every once in a while, and they're like, "We got to break it again, and it's yeah. not worth it." Yeah, it's not worth it. Oof. Yeah, not worth it. Yeah. Anyway, how do we start talking about that? I have no idea. We got on a tangent. We, we were started ta talking about sports and and um. And oh, we were talking about uh, waking up being sore and and waking up having thrown yes. your back out. Yes, yeah. and just being old. And just being old. Oh, what I was gonna say though <laughs> is, I really do. I really, I worked with this neuromuscular because I used to throw my back out all the time. Have we talked about this? No. Okay, so I used to have really bad back problems. Really? Yeah, really bad. Um, upper started in my upper back, just tension and like, uh, just a lot of pain in my upper back, and then it became like a low back. Oh wow, I threw my back out threw my back out, I'm walking like an 80 year old man, I need to go to the chiropractor kind of a thing. Okay. That started in my mid twenties. First time I ever did that, I was just at the gym. I was just like, you know, stretching and it was like, oh. You were literally just stretching. Yeah, like, cause yeah. most people are like, After oh, I was doing a deadlift. After a workout too. Oh, okay. It wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like I was cold, I was So warm. you probably hurt yourself while you were working yeah, out and just I didn't did know something. it. Right. Yeah, I did something weird, set myself up and. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, but through working with this neuromuscular therapist and reading that Dr. Sarno book, uh -huh. Healing Back Pain. That's amazing. What is, is the, the is it a long book? I'm, I no. don't have time. No, no, it's very short. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Well, that's another conversation that I don't want to have on camera about not having time because I, I have an idea about that, like a business idea. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Um, but I don't want to. <laughs> no, don't. No. Although there's part of me that like I'm I, that knows that I'm never going to actually do <laughs> actually it. Actually, do it. So I kind of want somebody else to do it because it's something that I would use anyway. We'll you, talk about it's that. cloning. Um, it's not cloning. No, <laughs> not cloning. Um, but uh, so the book, healing back pain. Like, yeah. Um, he was a back doctor, I believe a back doctor, chiropractor, something like that. And he had patients, he was like, he, he was so sick of, he couldn't make heads or tails, heads or tails of his patients. Cause like he would have patients coming, coming in with like completely jacked up physically backs Yeah. who had like a little bit of pain, but yeah. not much, you know? And then he'd have people with like debilitating back pain who had- With like a tiny bulge. Or nothing. Or so nothing. weird. And I went and got MRIs done and the guy was like, not only is your back- fine it's better than it should be for your age really so then where was is like, the so pain coming from so so i put a bunch of things together i was like okay so physically there's nothing wrong with me this book is telling me that a lot of back pain is for whatever reason your nervous system thinks there's something wrong huh. even though there isn't and it sends pain signals and you lock up so it's actually like a um almost like a nervous system error okay um, and then I had this neuromuscular therapist telling me the same thing and also doing these physical exercises where he was like kind of like helping me rebalance my body, but really what he was doing, he was doing that, but really what he was doing was retraining my nervous system to know that I'm not in danger. Huh. And I'm not kidding you. Uh, through, the pro through that process of about a year of like, you know, having read the book and working with that guy and all, I, I've, I haven't thrown my back out. And I, that's, I was to the point. I was to the point in my late thirties where I was throwing my back out once every two months, and it was. And I was like, and it was. I, I was getting. I was getting like depressed. Yeah. And and thinking my Chronic life pain is, is over. Depressing. Yeah. I was like, I'm only thirty seven years yeah. old, and I'm throwing my back out every two months. I um, wake up with debilitating neck pain like yeah. three days a week. No idea what it's from. No idea. You should read the book. I should read the you book. You should read the book. And I've yeah. and I've heard people with neck pain also have a lot of luck with that book as well. Really? Yeah. Yeah. All it's right. really it's really powerful. It. And yeah. then I've got a I've also got a doctor in um Temecula who I'll used to be I'll in LA. His, I'll take his number. That's my guy. He's amazing. He's in Temecula. Yeah, Where's Temecula? Idea. It's like south and east. Uh it's like a little bit north <laughs> like north and east of San Diego, <laughs> south and east of LA. Okay. So it's not on the coast. It's like Okay. Yeah. This is my this is my um I show my my lack of um formal like book education. Uh-huh. <laughs> when I'm like I have to do geography and I'm like, wait, where Yeah, what's east is, again? <laughs> is um where is east? Mm -hmm. Where is Temecula? Yeah. And where is I had that. Well when, we think of California as just one long coastline. We do. And then anything east anything is like, in, wait, we're what? like, wait a wait, second. What? What? There's you stuff mean, over there? You mean Reno? <laughs> You mean Nevada? Yeah. What are you talking about? That's, I don't understand what you're talking about. Yeah, well, no, huh? Wait, no, I'm no, not. There's no. the beach and then there's Nevada. There's the beach and then there's <laughs> Vegas. Yeah, Vegas. Like, what That's are you talking it. about? That's it. I don't understand what you're talking yeah. about. Um, speaking of, I, so you <laughs> grew up in Alabama and I had to, I worked in Alabama and I had to find it on a map. I was like, well, I know it's that way. <laughs> You didn't know where Alabama was. Well, I knew it was that way and down. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, but I knew I it was in the south. I didn't know it was like so close to New Orleans. Uh, yeah, I didn't know that. Uh, I didn't know what the Floribama shores were until I, mean, I went it's, there. It, 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 it's uh, yeah, a couple states away, but yeah, it's. I mean, you got it's Alabama, then Mississippi, then Louisiana. Yes. But yeah. When did you? But that has that finger. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the, has like a little finger. Yeah, that makes it. You know. Yeah, the, it, yeah, it kind of goes down like a little hand. Yeah, like a That's little where hand. Mobile is. Yeah, <laughs> where Mobile is. Yeah. When did you move to Alabama? Because you moved around a ton. Yeah, uh, grew up overseas, <clears throat> mostly in Korea and England until I was ten, and then um, and then we moved to Alabama. And my dad, in order, I think mostly in order to not well for two reasons. One, he didn't want us to have. He didn't want to pull us out of. He didn't want us to have to move again. Again, I was ten. My sister was thirteen, um, and so. But also because, he, and because he, he was a pilot in the Air Force, um, he was getting to that stage in his career where he was only doing pilot training. So he was training pilots. Right. He was like a flight instructor, basically. Um, and he was like, "I this, he's like, I don't want to be a flight instructor. I want to fly airplanes." So, and the Air Force wasn't really interested in him flying airplanes anymore. He was in his forties. 
uh, Tom Cruise is like, you know, Tom Cruise Maverick, he's like 60 years old. 60 like, years old. And they're <laughs> like, like, really? You're going to put a 60 year old? Okay. <laughs> Not only come train them, but save the day. Yeah, too, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you're the best we have. You're the best still. Look, at I believe 60. It. Yeah. Oh, hey, I believe. Look at the guy. <laughs> I believed it. Um, but yeah, so my, but my, so my dad was like, I'm going to retire and become an airline pilot so that I can continue to fly airplanes and my, I don't have to move my kids again. So, right. So they settled down there. And so in they're Alabama. all still there. Yeah. And still in Alabama. Mm -hmm. Alabama is an interesting place. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I, I did a film there and I was a film where I, you know, wanted to, as an actor, we maintain a certain size while we're filming. I didn't want to. <laughs> well, it depends on what it depends, right? Like if you're, if your if your character wears like big bulky moo's and sweaters, then it doesn't matter. Right. But you're if fine. you're, if you're going to have like a sex scene or like, you got to take your shirt off or something, you know, then Sadly, you're like, I don't book the moo characters. Yeah, you the I would like to book the moo characters. You're, you're, you're seen as like an athletic. I am person. seen as like the person that's going to beat everyone up. Yes, so I have are, to look actually. like I yeah. can do that, yes. which is not, it's, it, I can't, but I need to look like I can. <laughs> yeah. And so I had to stay in shape. And I remember being in Mobile, which I, I actually really loved you were in Mobile. Mobile. I was in Mobile. A Mobile school. Yeah. I love Mobile. Yeah, it's and nice. like it's, it was super close to New Orleans. And I, was, I would mm -hmm. drive down because my ex was there. And I just really loved it, actually. But I did at one point go to a really nice restaurant where the food was fantastic. Mm -hmm. But I remember asking for what the vegetable of the day was. And they told me that it was baked beans and macaroni and cheese. Yes, that was, that's the vegetable of the day. Yes, welcome to Alabama. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I literally went, I, mm. Sorry, I mean, no, uh, it's okay. sorry, let's, it's okay. let's define vegetable. Um, <laughs> it grows in the ground. Yeah, beans. Yeah, beans. Yeah, beans. <laughs> uh, beans. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're not going to get, yeah, yeah, it's a little tough to find a good salad. Wendy's. That's where I would go. Yeah. Wendy's has a great salad. So you were trying to you were trying to maintain a certain physique yeah. and stay remain healthy, but mostly fit. Fit. How old were you at the time? Were you in your twenties? I was probably thirty two. Okay, so your metabolism is starting to slow down a little bit. Yeah, can't just eat whatever you want. And work no, out and be fine. No. Yeah. Although in hindsight, I think I could. Mm. You know what I mean? Like that saying that like you'll never be as young and as like pretty and as thin as you are right now. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> like it's all in hindsight though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it was that uh, that thing. But it was a great, it was a fun film. What was, was the movie? Oculus. It was a horror film. Oh shit. I never saw that. I need to see that. It's super I, fun. It's supposed to be really good. I it's remember it's really, really good. A really good movie, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I had a really Did good time. Played um Karen Gillan's mom. Um yeah. What what? Are you guys the same math. age? No, sadly. <laughs> I bless you. How old is Karen Gillan? She is well, it was that I played her mom in flashbacks. I played the mom of oh, a fifteen, might... fourteen year old. Okay. And she was probably twenty two at the time. Okay. Probably okay. twenty two and I was about thirty two. I'm about ten years older than Karen. Are you? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I, oh, that's not a knock on her. I just didn't no. know how old she was. It's you're just telling me how great I look. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Glenn. Yes. I appreciate yes. it. It's more of that. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. I appreciate Although it. It's not, because you told me how old you are. So I, I did, know. I did. Yeah. Um, so I want to go back into the, it's always sunny because when Bryce was here last week, she said that, um, that, um, uh, BJ Novak said that shooting a movie is like running a marathon mm -hmm. and shooting a TV show is like running till you die. <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's like 15 seasons. Yeah. It's the longest running. It's the longest live action, yeah, comedy of all time. In certainly in American television history, right? I, I feel like there's probably shows in other countries that have gone longer, maybe. I have and certainly there are animated shows, but yes, not of course, live action. of course. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've got the the live action uh, record by two years now because Ozzy and Harriet went fourteen seasons, and that wow. was the longest running up to us um and then there have been a few i think that have gone 13 like i think maybe two and a half men did 13 seasons right or something like that anyway um yeah but how do you not, keep that fresh yeah how do we keep it fresh well first of all we don't do 22 episodes a year you know bj was doing on the office i mean i don't know how many a year they were doing but i mean a it lot, was a network probably. order yeah. so it must have been at least 20 
or somewhere between 18 and 22 a year. Yeah. Uh, that's beyond my comprehension. As yeah. somebody who's who's who has done what he is doing or was doing on that show, it's beyond my comprehension. You guys are, do everything though too, right? Like how, how does how does how does that work? Like how do you disperse the work between the three of you guys? Mm. Cuz you all write and produce, you've directed two episodes. Like how do you figure out how it's going to like shake down. Um, it's a little, I mean, you know, we've fallen into our little niches about like kind of who does what and, and all that, but usually it's just, it's a little, it, it flows a little bit more naturally. Like, you know, and, and we've also now gotten to a point where uh, the three of us are also busy with other enterprises as well. So, you know, sometimes Rob's like, I got to disappear for a couple of days to do a thing. And Charlie and I pick up to the own slack a football or, team <laughs> to go own a soccer team. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, we've got, first of all, we have an amazing writing staff. Um, we have got some, some really great people that we can really lean on hard in yeah. the writing process. Um, you know, to at least help us, um, the, the hardest part often or the most time consuming part is the story breaking part where you're like, starting with a blank page and you're like, what, what is this episode going to be? Like, what is, what's the next, what is, what is the next episode we're going to break? And for people who don't know, story break is basically outlining a story, right? Right. Do you do the, the entire season at once and then break down every no. episode? So you literally just break down episode by episode. Yeah. Except we will often split the room into two rooms. We'll have an idea for an episode. Usually as a whole room, we'll go, that seems like that could be an episode, you know, cause what we do, the, usually the, the process is, the first week we spend just putting note cards mm -hmm. onto a cork board. Like, just like, hey, we should do something about, like, uh, you know, um, the economy. Let's just do something about the economy. And then somebody will be like, oh, yeah, I had this idea about, like, doing a, an episode uh, in an RV, like, where Frank gets an RV. And, and then we're like, oh, that could go with the economy episode. So, like, maybe – they decide to save money by getting an RV and selling their apartments and they live in the RV, but then they really, you know what I mean? So that kind of right. goes like that. And then once you have like enough note cards up there and you start to go like, oh, it feels like, okay, a cat gets stuck in a wall. That should go with like, you right. know, an episode where like maybe Mac and Dennis are, are on the rocks and they're not sure if they're, they need to like, you know, they're getting too, whatever. And then uh, we'll break the room usually into two rooms and we'll be like, you take this one, go see if you can come up with an outline for that story. And then, you know, and then, and then we merge and we go, Hey, this is where we're at. We're having a little trouble with this area. And then finally it gets to the point where you have an outline for an episode. And then we usually get together with the whole room and pitch jokes on, on that outline, right? right. Pitch, just pitch on it. Just be like, what, what, you know? So by the time the writer goes to write it, we've all, every writer, every one of us has had our hands. Has had a hand in it. it. Has had a hand in it. Yeah. Huh. Um, and then the writer usually goes off with a, an outline with lots of like jokes and runs and, you know, stuff that we've come up with in the room, like little improvs and stuff. And, and then they write the episode based on that. And then after that, we get the episode, the three of us and the three of us do the final pass where we, and sometimes we get lucky and an episode's really close and we don't have to do that much. We just punch it up. Uh, and then other times we have to kind of do a almost complete overhaul. Yeah. But we don't even sometimes know that we're going to do that until we start working on it. And mm -hmm. then we realize like, ah, that's, this could be better. Like let's, you know, and then you start digging into it and it becomes a whole thing. And yeah. You know, but, um, people love the show. The show is huge. Yeah. It's, it's really weird because it has grown so kind of slowly mm -hmm. over the years. But it's weird because I feel like most shows this deep into a run, it would have, you know, kind of like hit its peak around maybe season six or seven. And then people are like, yeah, OK, I get it. It's not, you know, and then the diehards like stick around. And then once you get to like seasons 12 and 13, even the di even some of the diehards are like, You're like oh, oh man, they it jumped the shark. Our show is literally just like slow and steady in increase in viewers. Yeah. Every year, it's really weird. I, I don't. I don't really understand it either. Um, I, 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 yeah. I mean, I'm so I'm so in it. I can't explain. Like, yeah. I don't know what the. I don't know why that is. And I still. Well, it's lightning in a bottle, right? I mean, that's that is, thing. Yeah. I mean, it's sort of like everyone wishes that they could figure out that formula, but 
the formula worked for you guys in the right setting with the right people at the right time. And there's, there's no saying that you could do it again. No, it was yeah. a total, it's a total accident. It's yeah. A, it's a complete and total crapshoot. All we were doing was trying to make something that we thought was funny. That's yeah. all we were doing. How did you guys meet? Um, we, we knew each other a little bit in New York. Uh, we were all New York actors doing, you know, auditioning for the same things and we'd see each other at auditions. So that's, so we kind of knew each other's faces, but didn't really know each other, um, that well. But the three of us moved to LA around the same time and didn't really know that many other people. So you became and, like a tribe. Yeah. Yeah. So Rob, like I had, I had, uh, tested for a show with Charlie, uh, Rob had tested for another show with Charlie. So they they kind of became friends. I didn't really ever become friends with Charlie at that time, but like they kind of became buddies. And then when Rob moved out to LA, he called me and was like, hey, my buddy and I, Chris Backus, just moved to LA. Let's hang out. Like, I, I you know, I heard you lived here. Yeah. And we didn't, and it was a pretty bold move actually, because we didn't really know each other. Yeah. And he was just like, hey, you, you remember me? We've met at a couple of auditions. Like, you know who I am. And I was like, yeah, yeah, what's up? I feel like that happened a lot more when we started out. I don't feel like that kind of thing happens anymore. I feel like it's really? like, I don't know. I don't know. I, do, I mean, maybe I'm just so removed from moving here that I don't know, but I feel no, like people, when- well, first of all, making a phone call. Doesn't happen. Doesn't I feel mean, like- Nobody you, calls Someone would like anymore. be in your DMs and yes. be like, but I DM'd you like, you know, a year <laughs> yeah. ago and I told you I wanted to hang out with right. you. Like, you know, that, that right. whole like, of course you know who I am. You see my picture all the time. Mm -hmm. But like actually picking up a phone and calling someone, that doesn't happen anymore. Yeah, it doesn't. Uh, yeah, it probably doesn't happen very no. often. Certainly, no, um, no. But I mean, yeah. I didn't pick up the phone to ask you to do this. I text you. That is true. <laughs> and then ah, I shot you a text. Yeah, 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 yeah. I um, I could have DM'd you, but that would have that. I've, that feels little like way more impersonal than it needs to be, considering yeah. we're neighbors and we're friends. <laughs> considering I have keys to your house, you have keys to my house. You do have keys. I to do my have house. keys yeah. to your house. Yeah. I do have keys to your house. Um. How did you you come up with the character of Dennis? Because you tend to play, um, and Blackberry is also. Um, I feel like it's like it's like a strong suit for you that that isn't you. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's you play these assholes really yeah. well. Yeah, I think. <laughs> If I had to explain it, and and I'm not sure, I'm not 100 percent sure that this is even true, but this is what I this is what I suspect. Okay. I think that I, as a person, have actually worked tr tried to work towards being a good person. Uh, you know, um, not only pleasant to be around, but also thoughtful, um, respectful. Of other people, um, but like that takes that that that's not. I don't know that that's maybe maybe that's how some people just are mm. at their core, or maybe there's people more like me where it's like no, I have to consciously do that because I it would be very easy for me to fall into just being a selfish narcissistic prick. I and, I, but I, I work refuse at being to a be a nice that. person too. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Like my husband is just naturally. Yeah, he's he's just naturally kind. Yeah, he's very sweet. He's like, I feel like it's in the water in Canada. He's just yeah, a really naturally Canadians, good person, man. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love yeah. Him. I love but, him. But but then there, you know, I do work at it, so I get what you mean. Yeah, and I, I don't think I don't think if I didn't work at it, I would be a monster. I don't think so. You would be out murdering people. I, I know. I would, definitely wouldn't be murdering people, but that's mostly just because I wouldn't want to go to jail. Um, <laughs> Because I want to murder people. <laughs> Who doesn't? Um, no, but you got to know. It's good to know that you're not made for jail. Like you're not made oh, for prison. Dude, no, I'm not. Uh, I'm not no, made for no, prison. No no. 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 I. 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 You know that it'd be that whole thing of like. Ah, so I gotta just go punch the biggest guy in the face. Like right when I get there. Like I don't know if I have it in me to right? do that. Like you know, it's true. Like, prove my dominance. Right. I away. would be somebody's bitch so fast. Oh, I'd be such a bitch. I would, and I would lean in. Yeah, yeah, I, would, yeah, yeah. I would lean in real hard. Well, you just, yeah, at that point you're just kind of like, how can I? Maybe there's a way I can enjoy this. Like maybe, <laughs> yeah. maybe there's a way. You know, if I yeah. change my mentality a little bit, I can. Yeah. yeah. How do I get out of here mm -hmm. in one piece? Yes, without being <laughs> gutted. <laughs> being gutted. Yeah. <laughs> that would be my goal. That'd be nice. Yeah, um, exactly. Right. But, but so so anyway, uh, so my I think. As a result of the fact that I have consciously worked hard on myself to be a good person, 
when I see people in the world who are completely unconscious of how their actions affect other people, mm. it really pisses me off. 100%. Because I go, yeah, I don't want to use my blinker all the time when I drive. I, it's fucking annoying. And sometimes I just want to change. But, but I don't do it because I, I want, because I, I know that like my actions affect other people. You yeah. know, like, you know, it, it, sure, I want to smack my gum when I chew it, but I don't do it because it's fucking annoying. I love the it fact that you people. went straight from something well, that could that... cause accidents <laughs> and like, like actually bodily harm to someone to someone who's smacking gum. Well, if you have misophonia as I do, what is misophonia? Phonia. Phonia. Misophonia is, um, I'm not going to describe it completely accurately, but it's uh, its a disorder where basically, and I think something like, I think it's like 20% of the population has misophonia. Um, and a lot don't even know that it exists or what it is. And I didn't know for years that, I, that, that it was an actual thing that I had. Yeah. But like the sounds of people chewing loudly, mostly when they're smacking their food, <gasps> it's like, I would talk to people about it and they'd be like, oh yeah, that annoys me too. And I'm like, no, 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 no. It doesn't annoy me. It sends me into a rage. What does it do in your head? Like, what is the process of like, you hear somebody chewing, where do you go? Oh, uh, it just, it like, it goes through my entire nervous system. It makes, it circulates through my entire body. And I mean, it, it's, it's, uh, I'm not laughing at you, Glenn. I'm no, no, please with, laugh I'm literally at me. Please, laughing. Please, please I'm please laughing laugh. with you. Yeah. I can feel the, I can feel the rage. Yes. And I can feel you wanting to slam phones. 80% of your audience will be like, this guy's nuts. And the other 20% will be like, I find, I see, I feel seen. I feel seen. <laughs> I feel seen. That's what's going to happen. Watch. You read, do you read the comments? You read the comments. People are going to be like, yes, yes. We do read yes. the comments, but I don't want to tell them that we do because then they'll Misophonia. be like, it's a Misophonia. real thing. Yes, it's a real thing, and it and it and it's 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 like a disorder. I mean, it, it you know, and I of think course. a lot of people, like I have ADHD. Me too. So I think a lot of people with ADHD have it. I think um, cer certain neurodivergent people have this issue. I hear sound differently. I think than other people do. Mm -hmm. Sound affects me more deeply than any other sense. So much more than sight, touch. Um, you know, smell, um, sound in particular. I have like a dog hearing. I, do, I can hear if somebody's smacking their gum, like in the building next door, I can hear it. I'm so glad I didn't choose to it's chew awful. gum today. <laughs> I'm so glad. When, when were you, were you diagnosed with ADHD as a child? No, recently, actually. Me too. Yeah, as an yeah. adult. Yeah. I, I had a friend who, who was like, hey, you know, he, he was telling me that he got diagnosed with ADHD and as, as an adult. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. Like, how did you find out? And he was like, well, I found out. I can't even, this is terrible, but like, I can't remember um, what the symptoms were that he said he had. But they were all not symptoms that I associated with ADHD. Um, and it, it used to, it, there used to be ADD and ADHD. Mm -hmm. And now they just, now that it all falls under the category of ADHD, even though I would not consider myself hyperactive at all. Mm -hmm. However, it is accurate insofar as like, um, I'm a little all over the place. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'm like, I start concentrating on one thing that makes me think of something else. And then I go down that rabbit hole and then that makes me think of something else. And then I can't remember what the original thing was. And then I can't sit still. I can't read a book. This, You're you literally speaking about? my language. I'm shaking like, my I head. I can't I'm like read a hundred percent. You know what I mean? Without like, and, and you know, so anyway, I, so I thought like, let me, let me just try it. Let me get it. Uh, talk to somebody who, mm -hmm. who diagnoses people and just see if maybe I have this thing. You know, I I'd had Adderall a few times in order to really get through like a really tough writing day or like if I really had to like read a whole man manuscript or like a really thick thing. And I was just like, I, I can't. I need to like try to do something, you know. And it really, really worked for me. It's amazing. So I was like, That's interesting. Yeah. Adderall like really, really helps me, but I don't want to take Adderall. But whatever. Anyway, so I got a diagnosis, and and and, and sure enough, yeah. And it wasn't like I don't have like severe ADHD at all. It's like pretty mild, mm -hmm. but it's definitely there. Yeah. Yeah. No, me too. So you have it too. I do. I do. It was yeah. basically very, very similar thing where I was uh, going to a psych psychiatrist for other things. Yeah. 
this last year has been like really strange with our family and like our daughter's health and like all of these things. And so I wanted to talk to someone to make sure that I was actually trying to work through because when she was actually going through her treatment, I was compartmentalizing everything and oh, just yeah. like getting through it. So I started talking to him and were you worried you weren't processing it? I knew I wasn't processing it oh, because as a as a defense mechanism, I chose to just push through. Okay. I just kept saying that my mental health was not today's problem. Mm -hmm. So I just kept pushing it off. And I and I was like talking about it and things and like do you know, I, I was not in a terrible place. So yeah. I was obviously processing some of it to a certain extent. Um so but I started talking to this guy and I brought something up to him um a little bit like, you know. Later, I'd been seeing him, I think, for like six to seven months, eight months. And his response was, well, you know, you didn't come to me for a diagnosis, so I'm reluctant to to give you one mm. um, because that's not why you're here. You're, um, And I said, well, I – like, you know, narcissistically, it was like – Diagnosis. Wait, wait, you have more to say about me? <laughs> Diagnosis. Ooh. Do tell. <laughs> you figured something out about me. I'm so curious. <laughs> um, and uh, he was like, you are you are very clearly classic ADHD. And I was like, wow, what? Never occurred to me in a million years yeah. that that's what he was going to say to me. Now, why didn't that occur to you? Because you don't – because – you don't associate the things that you do with what you associate with yes. ADHD? Yeah. And I just assumed that I was really good at multitasking. Right. <laughs> but I don't finish yeah, that's 80% of it. Yeah. But I'm really good at thinking I'm doing a bunch of stuff at the same time. Yes. But like if I if you focus me, I'm like a demon. Like if you give me a task that needs to be finished in a time limit, uh -huh. oh, I'm good. Like packing a car, it's like Tetris. I'm really good at that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, but it's also a symptom of ADHD. It is a symptom of ADHD. Yeah. I um, hyper focus, and I don't look at people when I talk to them, which I just thought was me, like in this new wave of social media that I learned, like younger people not to look people in the eye. Uh, oh, because it makes them uncomfortable. I, no, because it makes me uncomfortable when oh. I'm talking. I have a hard time like looking at people. Um, if they're talking, I'm fine. But if I'm talking, I'm like, Whoa. Uh -huh. freaks me out. Um, yeah. but I was on a motorcycle ride once in Austria with a big group of people for charity and I'd flown in and was jet lagged and no one else was cause they'd gotten there a few days before me. And I was so tired. I was actually scared to get on a motorcycle. Mm -hmm. I couldn't keep my eyes open and I didn't know what I was going to do. And one of the people was like, do you want one of, I have some of my child's, it wasn't Adderall. It was the other one, the slow release Ritalin? one. It's not Ritalin. There's a slow release yeah, one. There's a few. I, I haven't taken it, but it's um. And I was like, well, you know, okay, let's see what happens. And it was like my I physically remember like this feeling of my brain just focusing in while I was on the motorcycle. Was it modafinil? Was it? No, no. But I went from thinking I was going to fall off the bike and die because I was so tired to so awake and focused yeah. that I felt like you could have put me at like Laguna Seca and I could have yeah. like, you know, Rocket. done the cork, the corkscrew turns like nobody's yeah, yeah, business. Yeah. I was so focused. Wow. Grinding my teeth, though. So obviously oh, so a little a, too maybe high. Maybe it was a high dose. <laughs> a little higher dose than you need. <laughs> yeah. A little Normal high. for him, but or for <laughs> his like kid, I'd been yeah. doing cocaine for, right. you know, an entire day. But yeah, nice. Yeah, it was great. Great it's way to be on a motorcycle. It's kind of fun for a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, meth and motorcycles, they kind of go together, right? <laughs> they go together perfectly. <laughs> yeah, right? It takes the edge off a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, um, I, I, I want to talk to you about BlackBerry because it it truly is. And, and the reason, one of the main reasons I wanted to have you on the show was we had a, a really fun conversation standing at my fence the other day where it was just the start of a conversation of like, mm -hmm. you do something new in this industry where people maybe didn't expect it from you and you start to get this critical acclaim mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, well, let me, I want to read this actually. Okay. So a ferocious and nearly unrecognizable Glenn Howerton steals this rowdy tech world satire. Like that's amazing. Um, you, you, Howerton steals the movie with a dynamic turn as a hardcore cunning business guy who won't take no for an answer as he wills the success of this smartphone into being. He drives this movie like J.K. Simmons drove Whiplash. That's a good one. That's amazing. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. And yeah. we talked about it because it was like all of a sudden you start getting attention that for mm -hmm. different things that you might not have ever gotten in an industry that you've been in for 20 years. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's a it is a weird thing, and and it, it, it's hard for me to process it. I certainly have no 
objectivity about it. I, I, I've tried hard to figure out how to take a sort of a, you know, longer view of it. Um, but it is, it is strange. Uh, I feel like I occupy this very strange space and maybe you've felt this as well of like being both successful and overlooked at the same time. A hundred percent. Yeah. I feel like that is literally my career. Like I'm just in the corner climbing a ladder. Yeah. And everyone there, I see people like, like literally taking yeah, like the elevator by me. To and I'm like, what yeah. is happening? It's okay. It's okay. Cause I've look at, I'll get there Yeah, and I'm still climbing. Yeah. Like I'm good. It's fine. Well, and you certainly don't want to complain about it because, uh, and I mean you, I mean b both of us, yeah. like, because we both work consistently. We're extraordinarily fortunate. Mm -hmm. When, it, when you look at the entire population of like actors in the world, like extraordinarily, extraordinarily fortunate. Yeah. Um, that being said, I don't think there's anything wrong with uh, continuing to be ambitious and strive for bigger and better things if that's what you want. Um, and I guess for me, I've, I've just have felt for a very long time like I've only been able to express a very, very small portion of what I'm capable of as a, as a performer, as an art artist. Um, luckily I've been able to do, I, th what I would argue is maybe some of the, some really, really great stuff. Um, but there I've got, there's just things that I know I want to do yeah. and, and, and can do, uh, that I, ha that it's just, you know, once you get put in a certain box, it's hard to find the opportunities to do that until somebody just goes until somebody you know, sees you and goes, I think you need to do this. And you're like, Ugh. you know, and you, and it's like I was talking about earlier, like you, f I, f I felt seen when this guy, you know, when Matt Johnson wanted to cast me in Blackberry. Matt Johnson's like, by the way, the he's direction, a he's a genius. Mm -hmm. he I have not seen such inspired direction from, um, I'm going to, I, 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 I hate to call him a newcomer because I know he's, he's been in it a long time or a while, um, but for someone that I hadn't had the benefit of hearing about before, yeah. he, I've not seen such a stylized, um, um, film. Like he has an individual voice that is so, um, apparent when you're watching that movie. Yeah. Unlike someone I'd seen in a long time. Yeah. He's really beautiful. Yeah. He's, he's a special guy. Yeah. He's a special guy and, and lovely Canadian. Canadian. Like uh, Canadians. lovely, a little crazy. I, um, as it to be expected. A little crazy, but not in a way where you're like, oh, this uh, this person is like unhinged. He's mm. not unhinged at all. He's just a little bit of a madman. Uh, but honestly, in the best possible sense, yeah. um, you know, he is, uh, you know, you can be kind of like, you can buck the system and be rebellious and sort of, uh, you know, not do things the way you're supposed to do them in a way that's sort of arrogant and cocky and off-putting. Mm -hmm. And then you can do them the way that Matt does them, which is where he's, there's no arrogance there whatsoever. It's, but it, but there is a, a certain belief that he has in himself and his own taste and his inner circle brain trust of friends that he's been making movies with for over 10 years. Well, you have to have that in this industry. I, so. I, I say that, 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 as an actor, or as a person who's going to succeed in this industry, you have to have an element of narcissism, just an element ah, where you have to, and this is just my way of explaining it, but like you have to believe in yourself no matter what, even when people tell you you can't, even when you hear no a million times, you have to know they're wrong. Uh, yes, yes. However, I and and this took me a long time because I grew up in a house with a mother who I don't think was ever able to distinguish the difference between confidence and arrogance. Mm. She saw the two as the same thing. Oh, and yeah. so as a result, I did as well. And anytime I felt overly confident, I was I would be like, "Oh, wait, are you become are you are you being arrogant?" you know? And it wasn't until well into my 30s, no. No, probably my early 30s, but probably around 30, where I finally learned to distinguish the difference between arrogance and confidence. And I think that uh, 
there is a major difference, although they can manifest themselves in similar ways. Um, I think one is is destructive and one is productive. Okay. Um, yeah. And and like, I, I you know I don't know what the classic definition of narcissism is, but when I think of narcissism, like I don't like I think that there is a distinction between narcissism and confidence. I agree with and you. I, th- I agree I, with you. Yeah. I, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and and look, I I think I think you're probably right insofar as I do think this business does have a lot of like narcissism yeah. in it and there are probably certain tools within being a narcissist that aren't so bad. I'm probably using the wrong word, Maybe. but I, I don't know. I, I, I I'm think not sure. it's I don't know. It's a, it's a it is a level of belief in your system in yourself mm-hmm. that can't be broken. Yeah. And, and that is not, um, I don't think that's something that can be trained. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And I had that, I had that, uh, for whatever reason, um, I had this like unflappable belief in myself that I could do great things. Was that from your parents? Like, because you see your dad doing great things and traveling around the world and, you know, mm-hmm. with his family. And, and I mean, that's, that's pretty extraordinary. Like that's not a normal life. No. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I definitely, I definitely attribute some of that, a, a, a good portion of that to the support that I have had of my parents, mm-hmm. like my, you know, and, and my sister, um, they were my first audience, you know, when I would do, when I would try to be funny or do bits at home or like do voices and just be silly at home, you know, they were the ones where it was like, if they laughed, it was like, oh, that was the validation I needed, you know? <laughs> um, so I do think that like, you know, and my parents were, were, were always very encouraging yeah. of me as, as an artist. They, I think they saw that I was drawn to it. And rather than be like, Ooh, we want him to be a doctor or a lawyer, mm. they actually were like, no, let's see, he wants to be an artist. Great. They supported that. Yeah. hundred percent. Not my parents. No, I'm just kidding. They did, but they still wish that I was in like in real estate. Still, no. I mean, maybe not now, but but <laughs> <I'm> like what? <laughs> cool. uh, you know, just in the last couple of years, that's yeah. changed. Yeah. Um, they would like me to move home, though. Yeah, for sure. But really? uh, yeah, it. Uh, you have to have that strong support system, though, because that is those early those early memories of being having a family that believes in you really does shape who you're going to become and, and your belief in yourself. I, I, you know, I, I've talked about this before, but, and, and I know that Juilliard has changed, but like that school was so, um, it was, it it was amazing. I mean, it, you know, you learn such amazing things at that school, but it would also, they, part of what they do there at at the, a lot of these conservatory drama schools is they, they want to break you down Mm -hmm. first, right? Because they want to rid you of your bad habits. But that's the intention. The intention's yeah. good. The intention is to strip you of all the bad habits you formed before you were trained, to bring you back to somewhat of a place of neutral and then build you back up from there. Right. In theory, it's brilliant. Unfortunately, the way that manifested itself often, as I saw it, was in the breaking down process. Some people would get broken down so much to the point where they no longer were in touch with what made them love acting to begin with. And I think... It seemed to me like a lot of those folks were the ones that didn't have a great support system growing up. And the one thing they had was theater and acting and, and the community of artists that, that, that they found at a certain point in their life. And they went, this is where I belong. And then it was taken away. And then they went to Juilliard and the message they received, even though it wasn't the message that was intended to be received, the message they received was, you, you don't belong here either. You belong nowhere. You, belo- right. you don't belong here either. And, that, and it destroyed them. It destroyed yeah. them. They were like, the one, the one thing I thought I had, and it's, it, that's being taken from me. And then there were people like me who they were like, you know, trying to break me down. And I just kind of went like, oh, fuck off. Yeah. Fuck off. I, it's why I never trained. Yeah. Because I moved here and my agency said, you need to go find an acting coach. So I went to the Beverly Hills Playhouse mm-hmm. and took some, I took some classes 
or and audited some classes. Yeah, how, and I, just tell me, like, I'm always curious about that. Like, how old were you at this time? I was 18. Oh, young. Young. Really young. Okay. And I remember sitting there and being appalled, just appalled at what they were doing to people. It felt like abuse. Breaking them down. It is abuse. It is abuse. Yeah. And I called my mom and I said, and and I said, I I just quit. <laughs> she went, why? And I said, because if that's acting, I don't want to fucking do it. Yeah. I, I'm going to try it my way and see what happens. And I never went back and studied again because I felt like if that's how you learn how to act, mm-hmm. I'm just going to fake it. Yeah. I'm going to just go over here and pretend in the corner and see if that, how far that gets me. Yeah. Cause it was, it was really awful to watch. It's not fair to do the people, but yeah, I don't, I mean, obviously I don't know what it was, what it was like, what you were witnessing. Um, it wasn't, it was never as overt as that certainly at Juilliard. And, and like I said, I do think that for the most part, most of the teachers there, yeah, that was not what they were trying to do. Right. The, uh, like you said, the, the intention is, yeah. is it makes complete sense on paper. It makes complete sense. But if you find that one kid that, that you break down too too much, you've just taken away the one thing in their life that they, they wanted more than anything and, and just ripped it away from them. It's hard. It's, we're yeah. kids. They're kids. They're kids. Dude, I mean, you're like 18 years old. Some of, some people were a little bit older, but there mm-hmm. were a lot of 18 year olds coming in there. Uh, and it, and, and I think they were, you know, they were fragile and they yeah. were vulnerable as many of us as artists already are by ver- by our very nature. Yeah. Um, and I don't think they did a good enough job at the time. Yeah. And like I said, I, I think they've, I've, from what I understand, it's gotten a lot better. Um, I don't think they did a good enough job of, of, of nurturing mm. people, uh, w- through the process of breaking them down. Right. Yeah. Like you don't, uh, you know, they say like, uh, if you're going to do like, what, what is it like, if you had to do like chelation to get rid of like a bunch of heavy metals in your body, you have to be really careful about how you do that because there can be a toxic you know, effect of like accumulating those things. And if you don't release them all and you can't release them all quick enough. And so it goes into your bloodstream and it make you know, so like during the I breaking have no down, no idea what you're talking yeah, about. Okay. All right. That's that. I just went to a weird place, but like you can strip heavy, you can strip heavy metals from your body. Yeah. Through a process process called chelation. Yeah. But you have to do it really slowly okay. and very thoughtfully. And you have to be able to make sure that you're releasing as much as you're, as you're, you know, extracting. Yeah, right. Because a certain you can get really sick. Is, yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah, because it's all being stored in your in your fat and your organs and stuff like that, and then the chelation like puts it into your bloodstream, basically. Yeah. To get in order to flush it out, but if you don't flush it out properly or in enough time, then it's just it's like in your blood. It's, it's in your like, blood. Yeah, a girlfriend of mine had to had stripped it out because she had um, extensions put in her hair that had the cheap metal in them, I oh, guess, boy. and it went into her hair follicles. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, it was really bad. Yeah. Really bad. So anyway, my, my yeah. point just being like, you know, I, I think they could have done a better job of nurturing us as they as yeah. they broke us down. Yeah. No, I don't. And, and I have no idea what what Beverly Hills Playhouse is like now. And and I'm, it could have been just a teacher. I have absolutely no idea. Right. But yeah, it 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 um it was like it freaked me out. Yeah. It really freaked me out. Um, but uh, yeah. Um, I so for for Blackberry, I want to I want to. Did you shave your head or was that a Bald cap. No, I shaved it. I, I shaved see. It. I thought so, yeah. but there's like, there's different rumors online. Right. Yeah. Uh, no, I I shaved it. You went for it. Yeah. Did you love it? <laughs> did she love it? <laughs> uh, she didn't like it as much as I did. I liked it. You leaned in. I did. I really liked it. I I I didn't think I would, and after, but after like literally, almost almost immediately after a, a, maybe a day or two. Yeah. I was like into it. I was like, I really like this. Were you playing the character at the grocery store on the like when you weren't working? No. So here, <laughs> or did you wear a hat? <laughs> here's the thing. This is where vanity comes into it. Um I, this will be hard to explain, but like I didn't care about walking around the world as a bald person. Mm. Okay. That didn't bother me, right? The idea that people would look at me and go, Oh, there's a bald guy. That didn't bother me in the slightest bit. Mm-hmm. What did bother me was if people went, isn't that the guy from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia? Oh, he wears a wig normally. Oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. I could I was see like, that. You know, if they would see me and go, and go, oh, shit, I didn't realize that guy was actually bald. 
So when I see him in interviews and stuff and podcasts and shit, that's a wig. Because they think you're wearing. inauthentic in that yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like so you're hiding. It was the and, and that's by the way a huge thing for me is inauthenticity. It's the th it's the 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 I value authenticity in a human being more than any other thing. So yeah. the idea that somebody could view me as inauthentic, uh, it, that really bugged me. So yeah. any any time I went out in public, I would wear a hat. Yeah. yeah. How long did it take to grow back? It grew back pretty quick. Did it? Yeah. I got, I'm You're lucky. lucky. I'm lucky in that department. At 47. Yeah. That's like like yeah. so many men are everybody, like, damn him. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. Everybody, everybody else was really jo like joking about like, weren't you scared to like shave? And I'm like, I don't think that's how it works. Like, And I did do some research on it. I'm like, you can't. You can't, like, that's not how it works. Is that you how know? your eyebrows work? I've heard your eyebrows do that, right? If you shave them? I don't know. Or pluck them? Pluck them? See, that's different. I don't know. It freaks me out. I think you can, I think maybe you can, like, sort of, like, damage, damage the hair the follicles. follicles by plucking. Yeah. But, like, by shave, I mean, you know, sh I shave my face all the time. And, uh, yeah. It always grows back. So, like, in theory, this should... <laughs> but I was like, yeah, I, mean, I guess you never last know. words. But I would definitely feel it when I had some stubble on there. I'm like, is it all? <laughs> it's coming back in little, little patchy like in little the, places. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, but it was all still there, you know? So, yeah, no, but I, I, I shaved it. I knew I needed to do that because I didn't want to put on a bald cap every single morning and I didn't want it to look terrible. And I was just like, yeah, I'll just fucking shave it. Like, who cares? Like, I, you know. Yeah, I've been dying for a film where they tell me to, to shave my head. Yeah, we get to just buzz it. It'd be so much fun. Yeah, it's It'd nice. so cool. Have you done it before? No. It's pretty great. I went really, really, really short, like, when Ginny was born. Oh, yeah. Like super oh, that's short right. And that's blonde. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I that was that. the shortest I've ever been. It was really yeah. short. Um, are people who have seen this movie, are they, what's the reception you've been getting from the people you know and the people you don't know? Um, I mean, it's been, it's been pretty, it's been pretty amazing. Uh, I, People are. I have friends and family members who like send me articles of mm -hmm. like, "Hey, this look, this is a really great article that I saw about about your performance or whatever." Um, and you know, and then just like go. I, I would when the movie first came out, I was I was going on Rotten Tomatoes to just see like how the film was being received. Uh, and I know that every actor is like, "Don't read reviews, don't read reviews," but I can't help myself. Oh, I, like, I read I, them all. I read. I read. A lot. Mm -hmm. I read. Same thing with Sunny. Still, sixteen years later, I'll be like, I'll see a Sunny review. I'm like, oh, what do they think of that episode? You know, um, I think if I was consistently getting bad reviews on things, I would probably stop reading <laughs> reviews. But most of them are pretty good, so I'm like, wow, that's good. Sort of like, <laughs> good. I always say, if I need a, a boost in in that department, I just walk into a comic book store. <laughs> so if I get if I get enough right. bad reviews, I just go for a walk down the street and like yes. pop in. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, anywhere where you know there's gonna be a confluence of sci fi folks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing with me. Like if I if I needed a boost of confidence, all I have to do is go to walk into an Irish pub. An Irish anywhere, pub. <laughs> anywhere and just be suddenly like heralded as the greatest man on earth. Uh, <laughs> but uh yeah. Um no, the reception has been has been absolutely incredible beyond anything I could ever possibly have imagined or expected. Honestly, um, it's what you it's what you hope for. You try to put in a great performance and and have it actually have impact and and have people actually like have enough impact where people are like talking about it. You yeah. Know? Uh, but I never expect it to happen because it's never happened before. I feel like I've put in good performances and other things that were just kind of ignored. You know, yeah. So I kind of expected it to be the same thing. I never have any expectation, you know. But I, there's always that hope, like oh, maybe. Did you ever have expectation though, and it like about anything, and it was the opposite? Oh shit, that's a good question. Um, like something that I did, something where I that thought, you were like, "This is it." Oh, this right. is it. Because yeah, like the, people tell you, "This is it." This is it. You're gonna, yeah. This. Oh shit. <laughs> well, that's funny. That's what they. I remember the, being told that when we first did that 80s show when I first, they, you know, my first gig, they were like, I mean. Well, yeah, because the 70s be the show friend. was so big yeah, and then the, the 80s friends. show comes out. Yeah. I remember auditioning for the 80s show. Oh, did you really? Mm. I think I did. When was that made? 2000, we shot the pilot in 2001, like the fall of 2001. I did audition because so, so it was right before Battlestar. Do you remember I, what character you auditioned for? No. Okay. No, because I booked Battlestar at the end, I got the script at the end of 2001, the beginning of 2002. Yeah. Yeah. I think you did better with Battlestar. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> it's so weird because that those were like my formative first years in LA. And because of my close friendship with Whitwer. Yeah. How'd you meet Sam Whitwer? He he and I went to Juilliard together. Shit. Yeah. Sam went to Juilliard? You didn't know that? How did I not know this? Sam went to Juilliard. But he was only there for two years. He left after our second year at Juilliard. Um, huh. But he was like, you know, by far one of my closest friends yeah. when we were there. And, you know, we continued to stay in touch even after he left. And then, you know, of course, when I moved to L.A., I was, you know, I was yeah. all over him because I didn't know any many other people. And Sam's one of my favorite people on the planet. He's um, one of my favorite people, too. He's I best. obviously don't know enough about him. He's too, well, you're going to you'll get it. <laughs> um but he, uh, yeah, he, he was, you know, I can't remember if he, if he was, when did he, do you remember, was he so in season one? He was in season one because uh, he we, was. Okay. we originally crashed down, wasn't it? Crashed his down. character's name? Yeah. And then he ended up crashing down. He <laughs> I sure think did. he sure did. Yeah. Um, but we met at his <sighs> apartment, right? You and I met at his apartment. Yes. Do you remember it? Yes. Yes. Because I remember it because I was at that point. I had become a huge fan. Oh, of the okay. Show. Like I was watching the show, and I was like, "This show's fucking great!" Like yeah. I loved it. Um, so, and and I remember we were doing, and we still do these movie nights. Yes, we still do them. Um, we've been doing Sam and I, and a couple of our other friends have been doing these movie nights for, I mean, since 1996. Wow! So, I only ever went to one. Uh, and you've only been to one. You should come to another one. I'd love to come to another one. Would you come one. to another one? I would absolutely come to another um, one. Unfortunately, they're always, almost always at Sam's house. I was going to say they're always very far away. Very far away. <laughs> we could carpool. I think that's probably, we could carpool. I think no, that's carpool. probably why I only went to one. Because yeah. I always lived on the west side. And yeah. I was like, oh. Yeah, he's, he's far away. He's far. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, that's where, that's where we met. So that's why I started watching Battlestar, because of him. Um, and, and then, yeah, we were doing a movie night at his apartment in the Valley and he was like, yeah, Katie's Katie from the show's coming. I was like, oh shit, that's so cool. <laughs> I thought it was the coolest thing ever. I was like, that's awesome. I love that show. And then you were so nice. You were so cool. Thank God. And I, I don't know. I just, thank I, God I, it was because you're so, you're so fucking tough on the show. I was like, she's going to be tough. She's gonna be just, yeah. she, like, she have a sense of humor. People always think coming to punch him in the face. It is a really, it's sort of like, it's benefited me in a lot of ways because I've not gotten a lot of shit in my life. Yeah. But at the same time, it doesn't benefit me because people think I'm really tough. <laughs> right. Sometimes you want to be a girly girl. I, I am. I, I mean, I like to think of myself as a girly girl. Right. I mean, I, you know, I wear jeans and t-shirt most of the time, but you know, I probably have more heels in my closet than I do tennis shoes, although it got really hard to wear them during COVID. What, heels? I don't know if Jill had this experience. I didn't wear heels for so long. Yeah, it's like a, yeah, you lose the I lost ability. my foot, my <laughs> foot got healthy again. And then I was doing a film and I had to wear heels and I put them on and I went, I can't do this. Oh, how had I, have I ever done this? They yeah. had to get me sensible mom heels. Oh my God. <laughs> and they were so comfortable sensible that I bought like five heels. pairs. <laughs> How do they look? Do they look terrible? Good? Do they terrible? Oh my god! But you, so your no. character wore sensible mom shoes? She did. It was a Hallmark movie. Everyone oh, wears sensible mom fine. shoes in Hallmark yeah, sure. movies. Yeah, sure, it's, sure. it's the, it's the <laughs> sensible <laughs> shoe. Yeah, but yeah. no, that's because you always play characters that that are not always, but you play characters that are assholes. So often, yeah. often, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that's right. That's why we started talking about that. So my, I, so I have had this. Because I, I'm so sensitive to people who are assholes yeah. in the world, I feel this need to satirize them. Okay. It's my way of purging my feelings where I want to murder them. <laughs> so instead I'm like, how can I how can I make them funny? How like can take I take the piss out of them? How can I take the piss out of out yeah. of these narcissistic, horrible people? Um I, that 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 was always always the approach with Dennis. It was like Dennis on It's Always Sunny is everything I hate in people. Yeah. Like that all wrapped into one character. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's a way of me coming to peace a little bit with it as well. All right. Um, and having some fun with it. Um, Jim in Blackberry, it wasn't, uh, I, I, you know, really tried hard to never lean into the comedy of the movie with that character. Uh, whereas with Sonny, it's like, you know, you do certain, th I do certain things rhythmically, musically, whatever that, that I just know are going to work comedically. Yeah. 
Whereas with Jim, I played it completely fucking straight. But that's like, why it works, man. Yeah, and I, 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 I wasn't sure. I wasn't 100% sure. I was like, you know, even when I watched the movie the first time, I thought like, oh man, this movie's so funny. Like I should have just like, I should have just let myself be a little funnier. I remember when you, you, know? you, you watched it the first time. Oh, you, and did you, I talk to you about you it? You talked to me about it and no. you were a little like, I don't know. I don't know. He's like. I think you said he's so unlikable. Was that what you were yeah. talking about? Like the fact that like he's just not, there's no redeeming qualities or something like that. I think I, you that's said. That's what I was worried about. I was, the first time I saw it, I really worried, you know, and it was weird because there was this, I'm not, there's, I'm not used to there being this massive disconnect between how I feel about a performance of mm. mine and how other people are responding to it. Um, Matt, the director was like, we've tested the movie with test audiences and your character is testing through the fucking roof. Yeah. People love your character. Right. And he told me this before I even saw the movie. So then I saw the movie and I was like, why? That's right. That's what it was. You saw it and we're like, like, what are they talking about? What are they talking about? Like, he's such a dick. Yeah. He's so abrasive and so angry and so petulant. And like opportunistic. Like he, he's really like uh, the, the beginning of the movie where like he, he, and this is based on a real story for anyone who doesn't know, we're talking about the movie Blackberry that, um, we all, I'm assuming own blackberries at one point in our lives, but this guy wangles his way in wangles. I don't know. I don't even know where that came from. Is that a word? Is that a word? It should be. You guys, I don't know where that came from. I don't either, but I, I like don't know. it. I hope it's not like a terrible, like faux pas. I hope oh, I'm not making right. fun that's of not someone. Like, a, yeah. like, I hope that's not yeah, been canceled. There's a whole canceled group of wangles word. right now. They're going to cancel you. <laughs> and, like, I'm done. This yeah. is it. This the is the moment. The wangles it. are, <laughs> at, it is like weird. They're coming after you. They're going to come after yeah. me so hard. <laughs> God, they're going to wangle the shit out of me. It's going to be really bad. <laughs> oh god so, that was funny i was like fuck is that a word because if it is i need to because it's great <laughs> it's, it's, wangles you heard his it here. way in okay I'm he sorry, wangled ahead. his way in <laughs> yeah he wangled his way in now i'm yeah. thinking that remote also reminded me of sperm like he wangles yeah. his way in it's yeah. like the one little guy wangled his way yeah, in there his way through. he made his way in so okay so your character <laughs> wangled his way in. I wangled my way in, yeah. He wangled his way in. He did. It sort of looks like a chicken dance. You yeah. know, like yeah, when yeah, you yeah. wangle when your you way wangle? in. Yeah. Um but he did. He he saw an opening and he and he wangled yeah. his way in. Yes. He yes. did. Yeah, he sure did. He, he did. He he saw the opening and he yeah. went, these kids have something. I need a job. He knew nothing about tech. Nothing. Really. Nothing really about tech. Um well, look, I mean, in the movie, he didn't. Uh, the real Jim at the time, I, I don't think he did. I mean, he he was working at a commercial manufacturing plant. Like, right. he was not, you know, he was not on the forefront of, uh, you know. Uh, Technology. Uh, yeah, Cell certainly. Phones. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think he saw, you know, he he remembered enough of their pitch, saw the picture of what it was that they were doing, got fired from his job and thought, this could really be something. Yeah. This could really be something, and I need to wangle my way into it. Wangle this way in. Because it could be a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Yeah. But he leveraged, and I don't know how accurate the movie is. Like, is it, are all of, is it loosely based or is it based? I know there's a difference. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's all, uh, look, uh, there was a whole team of lawyers like working on it. So it, right. it has to be, you know, um, it has to be true to a degree. Yes. Um, certainly, certain liberties are taken, characters are combined, moments, that happened days, you know, months apart happened in one scene, right? you know, stuff like that. But yeah. like almost everything that happens happened. Right. Or some version of it, some version close to it. Because happened. he leveraged his entire house, right? Like he, he, he did believe in them. Yeah. He took out a second mortgage, I think on, yeah. his, on his house in order to keep the business afloat because they got so screwed on the, uh, on the government on, contract. Yeah. The contract that they, that, where they were supposed to be selling these modems. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah. They got screwed, so he had to let. Yeah, I loved my BlackBerry. I was. Yeah, I feel like I was the final holdout. I, I bet you Jay Baruchel's got you beat. Really? He said he gave up his BlackBerry two years ago. Oh God, he does have me beat. Yeah, but I'm close. I'm sure it's three years now. I think my was, first was iPhone was like an iPhone seven. Okay, yeah. So you you held out for a while. So as what, long as I could, like 2015, 16, something like that. It was probably 13. Oh yeah, yeah, 2013. Yeah, I mean, you you were you were, but it was still. I mean, BlackBerry was still. Uh, I, shit, I think they actually may 2014, have. 2014, maybe. 
I think they may have actually hit their peak of sales. Oh, well, I don't know. I don't want to get this wrong, but they were still thriving in 2012. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were because I, re I mean, I, I, I specifically remember living in Marina del Rey and having a box of blackberries because I knew that everyone had iPhones and they were going to take them away from me at some point. Yeah. And I was like holding on to them because just in case I had to like go back mm -hmm. and like, you know, take parts from one to fix another one. Like oh, I was, Jesus, I was like, wow. I was like a little concerned because my rollerball and things like, mm -hmm. I, you know, sometimes it would go out and they'd be like, well, you need a new rollerball. And right. So you want so, to have another one on hand? Yeah. Just in case. Oh. I mean, I don't know anything about technology. I don't even think that's say, possible. But, uh, well. <laughs> um, so I wangled an invitation to our party. Wangle is a word. <gasps> I knew. What? There you go. So, wangled oh is God. past tense, as you can <laughs> obviously guess. Um, managed to obtain something by persuading or cleverly. I even fucking used it right. You totally used it yeah. right. Well, well, the crazy thing is, is when you manipulating said it, I was like, that someone. sounds like it should be a word. It sounds like it should be. Yeah. And it sure as fuck is. I swear to God. Well, that's going right into the is, vocab right I now. Don't, I don't think it's the first time I've used it either. <sighs> okay. It's been many years. First time you got called out on it. It, it is. <laughs> and it's the first time that I like said it with such authority. Yeah, you sure in did. In the middle of a conversation. Just tossed it right in there. I like did. you knew for sure that it was a word. I did. I knew 100% it was a Absolutely. word. Absolutely. But I you did. didn't. And I hesitated for just a second and then leaned further in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's cool. That is a word. Okay. All You're right. Welcome. I'm going to start using that one. You're welcome. Um, yeah. But the, the 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 rise of BlackBerry and then the fall of BlackBerry was unlike anything I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And I knew nothing yeah. of it until I watched this movie. I think that was one of the cool things that excited me about the movie, too, was that I feel like with a lot of these tech giants, most people kind of know the story behind them or they or the, or there was some iconic person you know who almost became a brand in and of themselves like this a Steve Jobs or a you know uh just some one of the, or you know an Elon Musk or somebody who's like this person that you know you know and yet i don't know anybody who knew the story of BlackBerry which was one of the biggest like tech inventions of the last 20 years. I, mean, it I was loved huge. it. I loved my Blackberry and I kept telling people every time they told me to get rid of it and I didn't even know if this was accurate. I just always said Blackberry's more secure than your stupid iPhone because they have their own servers. That's the only thing I ever said and that was my reason for wanting to hold on. Well, they they they, they, they drilled their talking points into your head. Yeah. Cuz that was that was one of the big draws. Yeah. Was that it was, you know, crazy secure. Yeah. And yeah, and and they still to this day operate as a I, I, the, BlackBerry is still a company. They is don't it make really? yeah, they don't make phones anymore. Huh. They only make software uh, that people use. I think it's like I don't know if it's like encryption software or security like software, a, but like that part of the business, they still they're own like a and, signal platform. Everybody thinks I don't think they're a platform. I think no, they, I think they literally other companies use BlackBerry technology in order to secure their whatever. Well, it actually sounds more like that than a phone. You know what I mean? Like, it sounds like the BlackBerry software sounds like very secure. Kind it of sounds a terrible like, name. Like a dark water like thing that they, <laughs> you right, know, right. like that I mean, like it's a government agency. Yeah, Black yeah, Berry. yeah, yeah. BlackBerry. Yeah. Yeah. Except the berry part, kind of uh, the black part. That, that sounds. It is like, a little fruity sounds, at the end. Yeah, yeah. It's a little fruity at the end. A little. <laughs> it's yeah. a little fruity. But like, uh, <laughs> um. It's not a great name for a device, a BlackBerry. It's not. Right? It's like, and I don't know, like in the movie, we sort of imply that like he's got this BlackBerry stain on his shirt and that's how we came up with the name. Yeah. I, that I actually don't think. You have no idea? Is, I don't think that's why. I think they came up with the name because the keyboard kind of looked like a like a BlackBerry. I mean, it, the, the keyboard looks like if you were to take a BlackBerry and flatten it oh, out. Oh, and flatten it out. It would look like the little. Oh. I think that's where the name well, came that, from. Well, I mean, that actually makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, I don't know. I don't, you would we think I would up. know. No. <laughs> I didn't do any research you know. before I worked on this movie. <laughs> Went into it totally blind. Totally and yet blind. still. And still. Imagine what I could do if I actually if do you the tried, work. Yeah. Now that's my holdout. I oh, just, boy. I don't like to give everything to a performance because I know if it fails, I still have an excuse. Yeah. You're like, I barely, I, I didn't even try. To, I barely tried. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I know we're in the middle of a, a writer's strike, but have, have, have like have you noticed an uptick in 
uh, like agency, res- like in in projects coming your way now it's that Blackberry weird... came out? <sighs> Could this movie have come out at a worse time? I say the same thing. Look, I was like, height of my career, strike. <laughs> That's basically what happened. Like, um, did a movie that everybody was talking about. Everyone's talking about my performance. Writers go on strike. Actors are probably going to go on strike. Right behind him. And it's dead. Yeah. So I'm like, great. I hope it's no not way to strike dead. while the iron's hot. I, 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 am, I and I get that too because that's sort of I, it, like I do mean that when I say I'm experiencing the same, the same thing. Yeah. But I am getting like wonderful, wonderful emails and yeah. texts from people in the business. Um, you know, some people that I, you know, have known sort of, but that are like like big important yeah. Hollywood folks. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then other random people was like, oh, this person like reached out and like, or, or my agent will send me an email that was sent to them from one of their clients. Like, hey, I just saw your client and this or whatever. Which is awesome. That word it's of nice. mouth though, that's like, yeah. you know, that's that thing that like we're told to believe that it may not help you today, yeah. but you, ha- you will have no idea how much it's affected your career until you're looking back at it five years from now yeah. and you're like, Oh shit. I It'll see. manifest itself. And it will, of course it yeah. will, because it's your performance is too good not to. Oh, thank and you. I do believe that the people in our industry are seeing this movie and, and that I think matters yeah. for that sort of recognition in order to like build momentum. And like, that's just a, I, do, I think that I'm, I'm like knocking on wood. The strike's going to be over before yeah. it, uh, you know, I hope so too. Plan. But yeah, it's, it's, um, it, it, it's a cool, it's a cool thing. It's, you know, it's weird. I have no desire uh, to be more famous. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And yet, you like your privacy. Yeah, I like my privacy. Yeah. And yet, you recognize as an actor that, like, with fame and notoriety, like, if the more people are curious about you or interested in you, um the more valuable you are 100%. as an actor and you get better jobs. So you're in this weird position of being like, well, I don't like want to give away my anonym, like all of my anonymity and my privacy. And yet I re- also recognize that like, I gotta, you know, you're, you're the higher your profile is, the more valuable you are to a film. And so you get better roles and, you know, and I, and I, and you want better roles. I mean, of course, of course, you of course. that's yeah. what, you know, our, our, goal as actors is not to just like act in front of a mirror you know like if we don't have a platform and we don't have an outlet then and and we don't have an audience then who's going to validate us we're not <laughs> we're not validated yeah, we're not validated and that's the whole reason i did this yeah, absolutely <laughs> yeah, i want people to see me i want people to tell me how great i am me. yes all the time yeah Including my husband. Of course. <laughs> Daily. Yeah. I'm raising my child the same way. To praise you? Yeah. Yeah, good. Yeah. It's not working, by the way. Her, my, gra- my, my grandmother, her grandmother has been with us for a couple weeks now, and I am now being shoved away by my daughter. Uh-oh. No mommy. No mommy. Grandma? Grandma, come. Grandma, come. Uh-huh. Yeah, no. It's is this-, is this uh, Robin's mom. Robin's mom. So I was going to say Robin's mom or your mom. Yeah. Canadian. Okay. Yeah. All the Canadians are good people. Yeah. So, so grandma's stealing your thunder. She's stealing my thunder. Oh boy. She leaves tomorrow. Okay. I'll get it back. You get it back. Yeah. She'll 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 still love you. She'll love but me. She'll, she'll but come she'll back. But she'll always like my you know like <laughs> I had this funny thing with my where Miles you yeah know Miles Miles um that's my oldest he's your oldest son uh, he's eleven at the time I think he was like ten and he was like I said something it was probably like a bad dad joke you know and he was like Dad you're not funny and I was like. <laughs> I was like, well, mm, that's sort of verifiably not true. <laughs> I was like, let me explain. He's like, oh my God, dad, are you gonna explain something? I'm like, no, 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 just hold on a second here. <laughs> roll with just, me. Just roll, just, just, I, I wanna, I just, just cause I think this is interesting and this is funny. Throughout, throughout time, <laughs> kids have been able to say to their dads and rightfully so, dad, you're not funny. And the dad didn't really have any sort of evidence to back up the yeah. claim that he actually was indeed funny. But I do. <laughs> I created the longest running live action sitcom in American television history. Buddy, I am funny. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy, I and he was like, oh my you. God, dad, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not cool. No, but you're not cool. Okay, fine. You're not cool. And I'm like, that, not provable. That's probably, that is, <laughs> that is 
That's probably yeah. true. Yeah, yeah, it's probably that's true. Probably it's probably true. true. Tom Cruise is flying planes at sixty years old with his shirt off. Yeah, <sighs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But but I was like I was like you know that's just that's sadly because you should it's like a rite of passage to be able to tell your dad that he's not funny and I'm like son it's it's I'm really sad for you that you can't say that, that you don't me. have this you don't have this go talk to your mother <laughs> go talk to your mother yeah <laughs> who's funnier than me by the way uh, <laughs> her episode of Sunny was so funny yeah she's I don't know how how did she fall in love with you <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean well she met the real me before she had seen the show um, so. <laughs> No, I think she had seen the show, but, but, uh, <laughs> you guys didn't meet during that episode. No. Oh, okay. I thought you met during that episode. Oh, no, 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 no. We'd been dating. Um, we'd been dating for a couple of years. Oh, okay. Before we All shot right. that. So she knew you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All she right. Knew you very okay. well. All right. We All were right. already engaged. Oh shit. Um, when we shot that, we weren't married yet, but we were engaged. Okay. So she knew, well, that she knew makes she was that recreation into. scene easier. Yes. Yes, the Top Gun <laughs> the recreation. The Top Gun yeah. recreation. Speaking of Tom Cruise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Kelly McGillis with the tongues out. Yay. Um, well, I um I I I'm so happy to sit down with you and I really, really thank you for coming in. I'm I'm slowly learning how to do this. Like I I didn't go, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Were you told the, not to do that? Well, no, I do that and I say um a lot. Did it take you a while to get used to this shit? Or did you just sit down and you, you were know, like good at it? I think the no, I I wouldn't say we sat down and we were good at it as much as we sat down and decided we didn't care whether we were good at it. Oh or shit! Not. Okay, we, the three of us we have a rapport. I mean, we've been working together for so long. We literally just went. We went into this. We're like we talked about it in the beginning. We're like, what should the podcast be? Like all those and 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 uh, uh, the conversation that we had about what should our podcast be about became what the podcast should, is. We were literally like, well, this is the podcast. Yeah. We'll spend the first four or five episodes being like, what is this? What are we doing? Like, what the fuck is this? Like, yeah. what is this podcast? Like, what is a podcast? What, what should we be doing? And having that conversation on the podcast became what the podcast is. That's how I feel. Yeah. Like, we sat down at one point and we were like, yeah, we'll do like, you know, 45-minute interviews. We're at an hour and a half. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, I have that there just to... It's like a ticking bomb. Well, you know, I have to pee so bad. That's perfect. That my body is telling me that, that it's, it's been it. an hour and a half. But, um, but yeah, no, I think, but I think that's what people like about podcasts, right? It's a yeah. long form sort of like, it is a little bit aimless at times, and, yeah. and you go off in all these divergent, you know, paths, and you forget what you were originally talking about, and that's, not, I think that's kind of what's fun about it. Like before podcasts, you didn't, you know, things had to be more focused. It yeah. was like you've got. 20 minutes and you got to get these questions in and all this kind yeah. of stuff. And like, I think, I don't know, you, you, you get a little something different on something like this. And, and now with, fun. with, you know, in order to make something successful, you just put two people with ADHD in a room, <laughs> <laughs> have them talk to each other, try to stay on course. Yes. Now, if we watch this back, if we watch this back, you watch this back and you're like, they, it seemed like they weren't even talking to each other. They were just, <laughs> one would say something and then the other one would say Katie's something else. looking over here the entire time. I have no idea what's happening. Yeah. We have no idea. Oh, God. <laughs> That's what it's, it's going to be. No, it That's won't. great. I think, I think having ADHD might be a superpower in the podcasting space. That's what my doctor told me. He yeah. told me that I needed to look at it as a superpower. I think it, yeah, because it, it can be. Yeah. It can be. Yeah. With the right drugs. With <laughs> Drugs, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just a little psilocybin. <laughs> yeah, a little psilocybin and some. Fine, you'll be I fine. Um, I'm gonna let you pee because God forbid. Um, listen, the chair's yellow, but we don't want to ruin it. I can um, make it more yellow. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for coming, you thank guys. You thank you for me. listening. Um, Glenn Howerton, if you haven't watched Blackberry, please do that. Um, it's absolutely fucking amazing. Um, thank Always you. Sunny, of course, is um fucking amazing, and your podcast. That is still going. Yep, that's still going. So the Always yes. Sunny podcast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah. Is there anything else you want to like plug? Where can people find you? Uh, do you want them to find you? Uh, sure. <laughs> Could you, you mean, imagine you I, give more addresses? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she can be found. We're on the same street. Um, no, you can wangle your way over to uh, Glenn Howerson on Instagram. There you go. And you'll find me there. Uh, but. Perfect. Uh, you'll find me on the pod. You, you've seen enough of me. You, it's, yeah. It's yeah. Fine. When in doubt, <laughs> you'll find him. <laughs> Thank you. That was fun. Aw.